everybody, and thank you so much for coming. Um, it was really lovely hearing Kat and Debris speaking. Um, I'm going to speak quite informally to the work. I've got quite a number of images as well. Um, but I just thought it was interesting hearing both of the other artists talking about the way that residencies are important. And also, um, it was intentional in the talks, but thinking about the way that you return to the same concepts over and over again and like even if you're not completely aware that that's what you're doing that there are reoccurring themes that one can return to but that the experience of playing with other things then informs you coming back to those in a new and fresh way um, so this is an example of a work that uh, is in process at the moment um, that is kind of the direction that I'm going in at the moment as a now predominantly textile based artist. Um, but I actually have a background in painting and printmaking. Um, I graduated from the Victorian College of the Arts in 2013. Uh, and at that time, sort of toward the end of my study was becoming really interested in the ideas of um, the pretty ugly, the grotesque, the abject, um, how to push something to be like ugly and beautiful at the same time um, and then also simultaneously ideas of consumption especially in like a hyper consumerist society and waste um, as well as like perceived sort of dichotomies or binaries like hard and soft masculine and feminine beautiful ugly you can make a whole list so i'll go back in time to about four years ago um, i was painting uh, and painting a lot of watercolour paintings, focusing on still lives, kind of playing into the idea of hierarchy, which I'm still very interested in, um, but sort of you know, liking the idea of making these disgusting, beautiful paintings that traditionally are viewed on the lower end of the spectrum of paintings, um, or women's paintings, um, making photorealistic of images and being obsessed with taking photographs of like every scrap in I could ever find and kind of freaking people out being like oh no don't don't chuck it out yeah <laughs> I need to, um, yeah, I need to paint it <laughs> I need to photograph all of them um, so I've made a quite a large series of those which at the time I intended to just do forever and ever but then moved on to other things through experimenting um, and so here are some images of works that moved on from that. These are paintings onto boiled egg membranes, um, which was a fun and interesting <laughs> experience. Um, so I think at the time I had this idea of using eggshells to make like interior design lampshades that would glow but be this like weird recycled material thing. And it didn't really work out, but painting on the outsides and the insides of them produced these like strange, like crunchy yet soft membranes that I um, ended up installing, but they have all since deteriorated. <laughs> um, but moving on from that, um, made this work that was entitled Clutch, which were paper sculptures that ended up being installed as like this flashing alien egg formation, um, which begged the question, who laid them? Um, but sort of employing elements of the psychedelic or um, like sort of low art forms to relay this idea of, um, know, of the ugly or the abject, but in a way that people seem to respond to um, and getting more and more into the idea of um, trying to create like an emotional or physical response with a work as opposed to highly intellectualizing a work. And obviously there's a conceptual backing, but I saw a couple of people like responding to that claw sponge in the audience and kind of making like this kind of movement at it, which is like my absolute satisfaction as an artist. I'm like, yes, the work is a success. People are physically grossed out. Um, and so concurrently I was experimenting with embroidery and trying to mimic nature, I suppose, in, in the way that uh, growth happens and like trying to figure out how something looks natural 
um, and making these like incredibly laborious, time-consuming embroideries of salvaged materials that um, sort of rely heavily upon chance because it, it was determined by what I could find, um, what I had lying around in the studio, and um, I didn't plan any of the designs for these, and so it was me sitting there doing it and then having to respond to the work that I had already done um, in kind of an organic way. So some detail there. Um, this was inspired by spaghetti mold. I don't know if you guys have ever left spaghetti in the fridge for three to five weeks. Um, <laughs> but if that does happen, it can sometimes produce this like fluorescent pink neon amazing visual experience that's disgusting but <laughs> like really incredible um so i'm using a lot of french knot stitches and i'm um, not trained as an embroiderer or anything like that but just got really into this incredibly laborious work and i suppose my work had always been detailed and focused on the overlooked but sort of became more and more obsessed with um sitting there like yeah. Croning old woman, but like in the best possible way, but sort of like in a tight little ball in the corner, and like cat like to sort of nestle into corners. <laughs> um, so making these works, and then from that wanted to make wearable items that played into um, ideas of haute couture and being incredibly glamorous. So this is silk um, with cotton, wool, glass, and ceramic beads, but making something that was inspired by a mouldy orange. So again, like the ideas of the grotesque or the abject interplaying with what is beautiful or um, sort of a status symbol or something like that. Um, some detail. And from that I made this work that focused more on the time that was involved. Um, and was also just like about me having fun and being like, I really like this process, so I'm going to work with that. Um, and again, it's made completely of salvaged things, including the, the backing that it's on. Um, this was the piece that ended up showing as part of my grad show, um, which was subsequently selected to be in Fresh, which is an exhibition that Craft Victoria facilitate of graduates that work in craft and I hadn't really considered myself to be a crafter of any kind but they did <laughs> um, and I suppose like there's, there's no way around it like it's it's a crafted work um, and so since then that has also um, I suppose made me question where I, I fit into the broader landscape of art and or craft and the traditional hierarchy of craft versus art and what that means and if that is still a relevant discussion or not, but it was interesting for me because it wasn't where it intended to be, but it kind of fitted very much into the scrapping kind of idea of playing with hierarchy in media. Um, there's some details. Um, and then after that, not being in art school and surrounded by an amazing community of people to talk to, went back to my lonely studio all by myself, <laughs> and um, instead of sketching or drawing in paint and pen, um, started doing that in red, just for fun, and this I wouldn't consider a finished work, but it was just me figuring out new techniques as somebody that wasn't trained in craft. Um, and so after having done that, um, I had a friend who I also went to uni with, was having a similar kind of shit time. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and we used each other, obviously as friends, but as, um, I don't know, I suppose like a replacement for the, the crits that one would have in that kind of situation. And we would um, try to, as best we could, objectively view each other's work and give each other feedback about what it was that we were doing. And we have similar worldviews and were making very different aesthetic work but that had quite similar conceptual backing and so we decided to collaborate we made this work that was this like um, huge chaotic tent structure that facilitated um, this like nearly two meter by 
two metre embroidery that we worked on together manically at my house over the period of about a month, which was our self-imposed residency situation. Um, But constant, like we worked on this together, but we're pushing each other the whole time. And so I think that, you know, like the idea of, of playing, but critiquing and being forced to do something that's out of your comfort zone, you know, not staying with the printing press or not like staying nestled in the corner has been really important to the progression of my practice. And I would argue every artist's practice, um, but I suppose each to their own. Um, here's some details. Some ceramics that my collaborator Lottie Schwartzberger made that were sort of um, superfluous weights to the bottom. Uh, and so in this work as well, a lot of what comes up as being like really dull was actually uh, incredibly vibrant under natural lighting, but being inside this dark structure with the lights off um, and then lit with black light was concealed and I suppose that was also something that we were interested in like investing this amount of labour that wasn't necessarily acknowledged um, which is something that happens all the time in arts and craft. So we then worked together on this installation um, which originally was for a show that was entitled Ritual Geology, but as the show sort of came together with, we were about 10 artists in the show, it ended up becoming this kind of kitsch investigation into Australiana. So we rolled with that um, and watched a lot of Australian horror films like um, Snowtown and Waking Fright and Body Mark was definitely the number one favourite. Um, and so made this like feminine, feminist, disgusting gore fest um, that we wanted to gross everybody out with but also to include a lot of what was familiar um, and play with that kind of sensation I suppose. So our material list for this was obviously like half the page. Uh, so these are some objects that were part of that installation that um, were the works that when taken away for me were like the propellant to the next kind of thing um, that I felt worked by themselves a little bit better. So they don't actually have titles but have pet names. So this one doesn't have a real name but um, it's like weird soft organ. Uh, and like this is a chabrou blob which is a technique that Debris and I have obviously both been using which is interesting but in such different ways but um, this is this was a scarf that was then turned into a soft sculpture as like a three dimensional object um, but it's just like you know like a weird octo ball uh, this is like mangled marsupial fetus blob Plush gold crown cushion. Uh, super gold kit. Um, so, this previous work led me on to making this work, um, which for me was kind of like a release of a lot of the feelings I was having at the time. I was really stressed out. Um, I'd just been on this amazing residency that had taken all of my time and effort and then like catapulted back into real life. Um, and so I was working a lot and was like, I just want to make this like pit of despair that sucks you in. <laughs> that is like this incredibly ornamented thing that um, weighs down upon the outer structure that is really sort of um, enticing but also terrifying. This was installed in a, a group exhibition at the Living Museum of the West, which um, was kind of put together in this really rushed way, but it was funny because afterwards, when all of the artists had installed, which was around the time of Halloween, it had this really Halloween-esque vibe to it, and like everything was black, white, 
pink and red. Um, <laughs> and we made a lot of jokes about if people came in, they'd be like, are you having a Halloween party? <laughs> this is detail. So all salvaged materials again. Um, so then after that, went back to just working in the studio and doing some sketches and working like on smaller sort of um, scales, I suppose, and using newer materials. Like I wanted to figure out how I could cut down some of the labor because it was just taking too long. And I felt like my production level was kind of waning and people were you know, doing all these amazing things, which was really wonderful, but I was like, oh, I'm still working on the same piece six months later. <laughs> um, and so found this like sparkly foam that was somewhere between being a paper and a textile. So I was like, I can cut that up and I can put it in things <laughs> like an applique. <laughs> um, and again, working in a studio, which is at my house, which is amazing because I'm a homebody, but is also a bit isolating. Um, was having friends over that are also artists and getting them to interact with the work. And a friend of mine who's an animator, his name is Milo Bluth, um, and I decided that we would do a collaboration together, so I made this online project, which was really fun for us. So this is a still from that project. And there are some other stills. And this was recently exhibited as part of Craft Cubed, but online, which was great, because I didn't have to find a space. <laughs> I just had to make a web page <laughs> and upload it, and then like, everybody, you can look at it, and you don't even have to go anywhere, um, which was kind of funny as well, because people were like, oh, I see you've got a project on at the moment. <laughs> It's like, yeah, did you click it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so afterwards they did. Um, so this was what was then pet named the Galloping Flesh Horse. Um, so you can still see this project online, actually. Um, the project was entitled Slash Panache. Um, and we worked together on all of the imagery, but all of the textures that are sort of more textured are from my physical work. And then all of the other gradient textures are my was animation work. Um, and so jumping straight from that to this, um, it was just on another residency down in regional Victoria in Portland um, with Lottie, my collaborator. Um, and we were in this beautiful apartment um, and had a huge workshop area that was maybe about half, or maybe not half a quarter of the size of this room with the old council table in it um, and like a bigger, apartment than the house that I live in, which was amazing to just have two people hanging out in. So we just worked um, day to night and for a long time we've talked about making costumes or clothes or wearable items and I've been a little bit timid to um, be like, oh no, we should make like an installation or something, I guess. Like, let's not make clothing. We're like, why are we scared of that? We should just do it. So we made all these different items um, and put them together. Um, over the two week period. So I would say that these aren't really finished works, but are rather a springboard for the next thing. But we had a, a fun little exhibition down there where people from the community came and ate cheese with us. <laughs> <laughs> um, so detail, again with some shibori work. Um, and then the core sponge that's being handed around, which I think is probably my best work yet. <laughs> spiky scepter um, and the wearable wound. So this will be a backpack. It originally was going to be um, quite similar to the super gore pit sort of ceramic work with a dangling bedded section. Um, but with working with a, another person who's sort of like, no, don't do that. You should do something else. <laughs> Why don't you try this? Um, develop a different, a different outcome. Um, and so I suppose this is my springboard for the residency that I'll be doing here and I'm not sure exactly what I'll end up doing but I think that what I hope to do is to make more wearable items. Um, the next thing I think will be some collar pieces that are sort of like small embroideries or tapestries that would be about maybe 15 centimetres by 35 centimetres that one can wear as a, 
chokra or a column, but that can also be installed as wall hangings.